module 21 bird flower and animal painting of the Shung dynasty 10th to 13th centuries. I, Dr. Rita Pratap, former head of the department drawing and painting, University of Rajasthan, Jaipur. A number of artists in Hui Tusung in Northern Shung Academy were experts in painting animals, which formed the seventh category in the catalog of his collection. The early 12th century master Li Ti, for example, was not only an accomplished flower painter, he was noted also for his painting of the water buffalo that show patient beast whose pondering form had become to the Chinese city dwellers a symbol of peace and tranquility of country life. Besides flower painter, Li Ti was an accomplished animal painter also. Mao Wan, son of Mao Shung and Han Khan were other painters who specialized in painting animals. In the catalogue of painting collection of the emperor Hui Tusung, eight of ten categories of painting were Hua Niu, bird and flower painting. The earliest known Chinese example is to be found on the side of a pottery grave jar, birds on a flowering branch, decoration on pottery grave jar 2nd to 3rd century AD in the collection of Dr. Paul Singer of New Jersey seems to be an isolated example. The art of flower painting has scarcely developed at all in China when the introduction of Buddhism created a demand for painters who could execute elaborate flowered canopies over Buddha and Bodhisattvas and depict the flower-strewn paradises described in the sutras, that is, Buddhist scriptures. From the temples, the art of flower painting spread to palaces and mansions where it formed an effective decoration for walls, screens and furniture generally. In the 10th century, Huang Chuan in Sichuan and Hisu Hisi in Nanking were both famous flower painters. The Chinese critiques customarily divide painting into three large subject categories. The two dealt with figure and landscape and a third included pictures of birds, flowers and animals. In the catalogue of the painting collection of the emperor Hui Tusung, the eighth of the ten categories of painting were Hua Niu, bird and flower paintings. The earliest known Chinese example is to be found on the side of a pottery grave jar, birds on a flowering branch. It is a decoration on pottery grave jar belonging to 2nd or 3rd century AD at present in the collection of Dr. Paul Singer of New Jersey seems to be an isolated example. The art of flower painting had scarcely developed at all in China when the introduction of Buddhism created a demand for painters who could execute elaborate flowered canopies over Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and depict the flower strewn paradises described in the sutras, that is, Buddhist scriptures. From the temples, the art of flower painting spread to palaces and mansions, where it formed an effective decoration for walls, screens and furniture generally. In the 10th century, Huang Chuan in Sichuan and Husu Hisi 
and Nankin were both famous flower painters, though for quite different techniques. According to earlier accounts, Huang Chuan applied his colors direct in thin washes without a strong outline, a technique called Mo Ku Hua, literally boneless painting. For example, his painting titled An Assembly of Birds on a Willow Bank is a hand scroll probably belonging to Shung dynasty and at present in the Heaven Country Yale University Art Gallery. Study of wonderful birds and other living creatures by Huang Chuan artist. It is ink and paints on silk, double album leaf mounted on a scroll and at present in the Beijing Palace Museum. This is more of a fragment or a study than a composition. It shows birds, insects and two turtles in a loose composition where they stand unrelated but are portrayed with meticulous precision. It could be described as study in the western sense. The artist's dedication is so lifelike that one can even identify different bird species. His manner was described as the life painting style, Qi Sheng, meaning that the artist painted accurately from nature. Hosu Hisi, on the other hand, drew his outlines firmly in ink and then filled them in color. In general, later flower painters in the academy tradition are said to have based their techniques on the more decorative manner of Huang Chuan, while a mature claimed to follow Husu Hisi because the basis of his art was the ink line, the natural means of expression of the scholar and calligrapher. But in any event, beginning with Huang's son, Huang Chu Tsai, they all borrowed the techniques freely from both schools and the two traditions are not clearly defined. The above said painting has an inscription referring to its having been recorded and selected by the interior treasury of painting of the imperial palace in 1032 AD. The painting has been severely damaged and so clumsily restored that it is now impossible to tell whether or not it goes back to the 10th century and Huang Chuan, though a careful examination of the underlying ink drawing suggests that it may well be a work of Shung dynasty. The flowers painted in a thick impasto style gives an effect of relief. A large hanging scroll in the Palace Museum collection, Taiwan, depicts two magpies teasing a hare, dated to 1061, which bears a signature of Tsui Po, a brilliant and wayward member of the Imperial Painting Academy. The artist has caught miraculously the atmosphere of oncoming winter presenting it not as a set of conventional forms in frozen, colourful immobility, but as something that happens in nature. The air is full of tumlut, the magpies shriek their insults, while the cold wind 
rattles the dry bamboo and seeks to tear from an old branch and the few dead and dying leaves still cling to it birds in flowers painting under hui tsung and after the compilers of the catalog of painting in the collection of hui tsung the painter emperor of the northern shung dynasty remarked somewhat tartly that to sui po showed an excessive reliance on his own wit that such a verdict could have been passed is symptomatic of the change that had come over imperial patronage under hui tsung the emperor hui tsung himself was a bird and flower painter of major rank he painted birds and flowers in a flawless accurate technique and demanded the same of his academicians he would give them set themes to test their observations and would criticize the most travel mistake when he himself painted a picture they hastened obsequiously to copy it as a special mark of his favor he would add his own abbreviated signature and perhaps an inscription in his elegant handwriting to any of their paintings that particularly pleased him among his favorites was li anchung a specialist in painting quail who was later awarded the golden girdle under the emperor kao tsung at hang chau it is now difficult if not impossible to separate the surviving several dozen paintings by hui tsung himself from those of his academicians that he obligingly signed one famous painting by hui tsung is the hand scroll of five colored parakeet on a branch of apricot blossom it is at present in the museum of fine arts boston belongs to early 12th century the inscription certainly by the emperor himself describes the bird in poem and prose as lovable guest in the garden a visitor from the south the parakeet here is observed with minute accuracy the bird is poised in an airless void without depth or atmosphere no breeze lifts its feathers no sound escapes from to beak with such an example before the court painters of later times had no longer any incentive to look at nature itself for kui tsung and his circle had created for them a world more perfect and flawless than nature ever achieved another painting of the emperor kui tsung is two finches on twigs of bamboo it is a section of a hand scroll ink and colors on silk and at present in the collection of john m crawford junior new york some bird and flower painters of the shadan shung academy however succeeded in their exquisite pictures in transcending the conventional limits a lovely fan painting birds coloring on a blossoming quince is believed to be by lin chun a prominent member of the southern shung academy during the later years of 12th century he is said to have based his style on that of the early 
northern shung flower painter chao chang who was one of the first to make intimate close up studies of nature the chattering birds delicate leaf and soft colors give the picture a seductive charm hui tusong and painters of animal a number of artists in hui tusong's reign and in northern shung academy were experts in painting animals which formed the seventh category in the catalog of his collection artists portrayed animals absorbed in their private activities being unaware of being observed the early 12th century master li ti for example was not only an accomplished flower painter he was also noted for his paintings of the water buffalo that show patient beast whose ponderings form had become to the chinese city dwellers a symbol of the peace and tranquility of country life li ti's most beautiful paintings of this kind are probably a pair of album leaves in the osaka municipal art museum japan depicting two farmers the one leading his buffaloes and the other riding him homewards through the snow on a winter evening returning through the snow on a water buffalo is dated to 1100 after 1197 a number of other buffalo painting of the shung dynasty have survived many of which are attributed though less reasons to li ti another theme popular with the shung academicians was another theme popular with the shung academicians was the melancholy parody of human nature to be seen in the faces of monkeys the most famous monkey painter was mao shung belonging to early 13th century his surviving works show both masterly technique and humorous insight into simian character monkey by mao shung it is an album leaf ink and colors on silk china belonging to shung dynasty and at present in the tokyo national museum this has captured the character of the seated monkey his son mao one specialized in painting dogs and cats in garden setting album leaf attributed to mao one mother cat and kittens in a garden dated to 12th century the mother cat in its plump haughtiness is an animal counterpart of tongue coat ladies the same aristocratic conviction of security is expressed in its poise and calm gaze two of the kittens wrestle playfully another in the foreground its orange fur but all invisible against the brown silk gazes upward at the pair of small white butterflies dancing in the air beside the hollyhock flowers in a famous pair of hanging scroll in palace museum collection taichung one can find deer among red leafed maples the scroll represents herd of deers in autumn forests of maple trees as regards its creation a convincing theory is that they were produced under liao dynasty of the khitan tatar which controlled the north of china along with parts of mongolia and manchuria horses as a subject for painting seem to have appeared less to the shung emperors who preferred gentler themes than tang emperors 
Nevertheless, Shung horse painters usually modeled their style on the Tang masters. And one of them, Chen Chu Chang, active about 12th century, was said in his day to be a Han Kang reborn. Surviving pictures attributed to him are mostly scenes of Mongol horsemen or illustrations of the story of Wen Chi, a lady of the Han dynasty who spent 12 years as prisoner of the barbarian Hsiung Nu tribe. The horse indeed was always a northern subject. It became very popular in the North China under the Qin Tartars and later under Mongols. The album leaf showing a Mongol soldier escorting a Chinese woman with her two children was probably painted by a Chinese artist working for Qin Tartar court in the 12th and 13th century. Here the horses have a solidity of form and vigor of movement, very different from the saw refinement displayed at the same period by horse painter of the Southern Shung Academy. Another anonymous, a 10th century, attributed to Han Khan hanging scroll of monkeys and horses. It is ink and color on silk belonging to 8th century and at present in the palace museum collection Taichung. In the picture, two monkeys hang from the upper branches of a tree and a third perched on a rock and the two horses below trotting towards an undefined destination. Though attributed to Han Khan, but appears to be a later, probably early Shung in date. Some other painters who painted the animal subjects were Mu Chi, better known as Fa Chang in China. His scroll, Monkey with a Baby, is ink and slight color on silk and belongs to the southern Shung dynasty and at present in Dai Tokuji, Kyoto. This is a boldly depicted painting. The mother monkey is holding her baby on the pine branches. Li Fung means creation, five tribute horses, section of a hand scroll, ink on silk, China, Northern Shung Dynasty, formerly Kikuchi Collection, Tokyo, is also a beautiful example. Chao Meng Fu's hand scroll titled Sheep and Goat is a good example. It is also ink on paper belonging to Yuan dynasty and at present in the Freer Gallery of Art, Synthesonian Institution, Washington, D.C. Here the painting and calligraphy is by Chao Meng Fu. The two animals Sheep and goat are beautifully delineated in minimum of lines and effort and the effect convincing. At the end of the Tang period, there had been some depictions of Fanta's majorical creature both in landscape and in painting of plants, animals and figures, but they were superseded by more realistic forms in the five dynasties period when animals became animals again. Major artists in the history of Chinese paintings were such men as Li Chang, Tung Yuan, Chu Qi. All genres were produced in this period. Bird and flower painting with its subgenre of bamboo painting monumental landscape painting and painting on religious subjects and legions figure painting. The five bullock painted by Huang belongs to Tang period, ink and paint on silk and at present in the Beijing Palace Museum, 
collection. The picture bears an inscription by the emperor of the Qian long reign and many collectors seal. It is seen that painters of the time did not specialize in a single area either. There is found a comic element in the different attitudes of the animal. The bullocks are obstinate or skittish with specific feature such as prominent bones and horns are curious in appearance. Technically, the artist has employed outline and color to define physical characteristic and not light and shade. A deliberate ink stroke portrays fold in the flesh. The use or omission of color conveys the making of the animal's coat and depiction remains a surface representation. Scroll of 100 Horses by anonymous painter Tang period influenced by Han Khan. Ink and painting on silk and at present in the Beijing Palace Museum collection. This picture by an unknown artist reflects the life of grooms and the horses in their care, portraying the liveliness of the horses themselves and the activities involved in working with them. Its composition traces a succession of events. First, the horse is untied and washed, then it plays, is fed and groomed, and finally two caprisoned animals clearly mark the end of the pictorial scroll the heads pointing back to its beginning. Mm -hmm.